I, I find it ironic because our household was the same way, at least when I was still there. Mm -hmm. It was like the neighborhood gathering. All the kids would come over, over to our house and we'd play Nerf ball in the backyard or video games or the mm -hmm. same, same, same idea, a, a house to hang out at. So. Yeah. And then what about as you became a uh, preteen, early teen? What did you do? What was your? What, how'd you pass your time in the summertime, for example? Hmm. Probably picking strawberries and earning earning some money, a little bit of money. So there was like strawberry fields nearby, or. Uh, they had a, a bus, a bus that would make, you, make the rounds and take you out to the ah, okay. fields. Didn't you deliver the newspaper too? Yeah, I did. Bit? I had a paper out. A little bit? How long did you do that? A couple of years. Really? Yeah. Make a lot of money? No. No, I just <laughs> see a lot of, I see a lot of similarities between your childhood and mine. Oh, yeah? I mean, obviously I was financially in a better way because of you, but but I was a, you know, I, could, I did the newspapers for several years because that was the deal. You remember the deal you made with me about a car? No. Where you said you would buy the car, but it was my job to insure it and gas. That's, that was my responsibility. Hmm. And that was, and, and only under those conditions could I have, could I have a car. So that's when I Got the newspaper out, and that's how I paid for. Paid for you were insurance. going to. I was in high school. Yeah, the high, Marion. I was Marion, in Marion yeah. High School. Yeah, and uh, it was quite a drive. Mm-hmm. From Paradise Hills to almost Imperial Beach. Yeah. So, but that was the deal. I wanted a car, and that was the only way I was going to get one. So I said, okay, fine. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and I didn't get to do activities after school and stuff like that. But I, it didn't ma didn't bother me because I I learned something more important at least I felt at the time mm -hmm. and that was how to work what it meant to work and then based on work I was able to get other things <laughs> as opposed to you know doing school activities after school and whatnot mm -hmm. so so I learned something it taught me something that 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 lesson will never leave me you basically taught me how to work. In that way, not to mention well, and and your example as well, because I remember you you worked more than forty hours a week. You worked a lot, at least it seemed to me. Not not as much as I do now, but I yeah. mean, as a kid, it seemed like you you worked a lot. And uh, and there's that song, "Cats in the Cradle." Mm -hmm. I mean, every time I hear that song, it just reminds me of you. Oh, yeah, and. Uh, but in a good way, in a good way. Good. And as I get older, I, I appreciate more what you did as I was growing mm -hmm. up and what you did to provide, how you provided for us, you know. And so that never will, will leave me. And so as I get older, I'm grown to appreciate that more and more. Just, just so yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you were a fine son. So. A very good son. But uh, anyway, let's see what else. What else? I'm just trying to think. Is there anything else that we failed to to cover? Teenager driving. You got to at least tell the story about the the gasoline running out of gasoline. Oh. You got to at least tell that story. Yeah, we had we had two cars. My my folks had two cars. Uh -huh. Well, they had a th '36 Chevrolet four-door sedan, mm -hmm. and then they got a 41 or something like that model. So the 36 Chevrolet sat at home most of the time. So like a backup, yeah, backup vehicle. Yeah. So one day I thought, oh, I should, you know, go for a ride in this thing. <laughs> and so I did, and I ran out of gas over on Rocky Butte, about five miles from home, and it had no no containers or anything that. I, I forget what I what I needed. So, b about halfway between home and uh, where I was stuck uh -huh. was was the church we went to, and my mom was there for some reason. And 
I went and saw her and, and uh, got some money to buy some gas and get home. Now, I imagine she didn't make a scene at the church. No. But That's maybe. I remember. Maybe you heard about it later. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you recall your dad saying anything? No. My dad was very quiet. What was your recollection of your dad? What do you recall about your dad? What uh, anything stand out? Uh, any particular things he would do or say or? Well, he built he built the house we moved into. He was a carpenter. Uh, we lived on a half acre. Uh -huh. Started up on 98th Street, and the next block down was 96th Street. And then that half mile or so, my, that's where the uh, the house the house was built. He he, he split the property huh. and built a house on the on the lower on the lower half. wasn't any wasn't any closer to school or anything. <laughs> and uh, but that was all his work. And how how old were you? At this time, probably I was probably uh, hmm, fourteen, maybe. Okay. And how how long did it take him to build the house? And and what kind of house? Two story, one bathroom, full basement, uh -huh. uh, and his one of his brothers was a plumber, so he did the so he plumbed, he did the plumbing and couple of guys that went to church were electricians and so they did the electrical work. How many bedrooms? There was two bedrooms upstairs and two downstairs. Four oh, bedrooms. Okay. Yeah. And then what happened to the old house? Sold it. Okay. Sold it and they moved it. Which huh. surprised me. I didn't think you could move something like that, but they did. Huh. And I saw it in its new location one year. Huh. But uh and that was the house you stayed in until you joined the Navy? That was your... No, I joined the Navy when we lived in the new house. Oh, no, I mean, oh. when you moved into the house that he built, that mm -hmm. was basically your house until you right. until you left to yes. go up to the Navy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess that would, that would definitely be uh, memorable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, and and... Based on based on knowing that your dad was a carpenter, it, it makes sense because you're very skilled. You're a skilled carpenter, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. It's true because you built uh, the uh, the shelves and the, the cabinetry cabinetry stuff in, in the house in San Diego. And I never could do that. Plus, you built the playhouse as well. I guess that was your version of a house, but. But you built that house, and I remember, I remember you take me down to the lumber yard, to Builders Emporium, I think it was, out in Spring Valley, and you mm -hmm. buy whatever wood you needed at the time and bring it back, and you built it so it was eight foot by eight foot, just under regulation. Oh yeah. For permits, if you build it any bigger, then you had to get a permit, and then, you know, a whole another, whole another process there, mm. but. But that was one thing I always admired is your ability as a as a carpenter, and I guess in the high school you in, did you take wood shop? Yeah, I, I majored in carpentry. Ah, okay. Back, Major, majored in carpentry. Now back then, were there two tracks like uh, like a uh, what do you want what do you call it? I want to call it um, you know the 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 technical trades the trades mm -hmm. and then. Kids who wanted to go to college, did the school divide that way, or they just offered it? It was just offered. It was a, a, a track you took, carpentry. Yeah, it was, I was interested in, in carpentry. So how did you go from carpentry to pipe fitter? I was offered a job uh, after my graduation uh -huh. by a member of the church we went to. Uh -huh. And he was some kind of, I forget what his job was, but it, it involved working with people in the, in the uh, area. Mm 